to the Marine Biology Post's YouTube channel. Um, I've never done this before, so I'm going to apologise in advance for the terrible editing, filming, sound quality, everything. It's not going to be good, um, but hopefully I'll get better at it if, if I make more videos. So I started a Marine Biology Instagram account in January 2020, and it's going so much bigger than I ever ever expected um, and I do get quite a few people DM me and just ask about how you get into marine biology, what it's like to do marine biology um, and where you even start uh, and obviously I'm not a marine biologist yet, I'm still at university, I'm still getting my degree um, so I don't know everything but um, I thought it'd be quite helpful to kind of answer some of those questions and to give people a bit of an idea of how you get into doing marine biology at university and what it's like. Because uh, I remember when I was looking at, I watched some YouTube videos about marine biology and like how you get into it, but to be honest there's not that much out there, so I just hope this will be useful for people um, so they know what it's going to be like if they want to get into it. I just clapped really loud. Um, so basically I took some of these questions off of my Instagram, I've been doing some like stories up there and getting people to post in any questions that they had, um, and basically I've also added in a couple of questions that I think would be really useful to know if you want to get into marine biology. So here we go, let's start. The most common questions I get is what subjects do I need to take to be able to apply for marine biology. So what are the best subjects that will line me up for applying for marine biology at university level? Um, and this can be at GCSE level or A levels. What are the best subjects that you can take? Obviously I'm in the UK, so I don't know about anywhere else, but this is just from my experience in the UK and I'm sure it's probably quite similar in other countries, maybe just slightly different. I knew I wanted to be a marine biologist from like when I was really little, but a like, typical story of like your dream job when you're like 12. Um, but I genuinely always have wanted to be one. So I knew even when I was doing my GCSEs, I kind of had the idea that I would go into marine biology. So I kind of knew that I needed to take um, science. So I definitely recommend taking biology. I mean, at GCSEs, we had to take, um, we did double science at my school. Um, that wasn't an option, I know a lot of places it is compulsory, but um, GCSE level, obviously you have to take your science, maths and English, but on top of that I would definitely recommend taking geography. Geography is actually quite a common thing that comes up in marine biology all the time. You're learning about the environment and like coastal systems, it's really really important and you cover that in geography a lot. And then Basically for A-level, there are five main subjects that come up all the time in marine biology at university level. Um, so obviously, if you can take five A-levels, like you're obviously a genius, but I know a lot of places don't do five and I never did five and I don't know anyone who's done five. So you don't have to take all of these five, but you can pick like your top ones that you're best at or your favorite. I would suggest definitely biology, number one. Definitely need biology for marine biology. It'll make it so much easier to understand and the transition will be so much smoother from A-level to university level biology. Chemistry is also really, really important. A lot of the modules we did in our first year were like biochemistry. So it involves a lot of, of understanding of elements and like how processes work in the ocean and also interlinks really well with biology because you do a lot of chemical reactions in biology. Uh, the third one is definitely geography. So geography was so important, you learn so much about coastal environments, about wave action, about transportation of sediment and about um, <clears throat> a lot of like geology in that as well. Um, and a lot of things about weathering and just how the planet interacts as a whole um, with the ocean is so important, it comes up all the time and it's all about also like global warming and climate change which you learn about in geography so I definitely suggest geography. Uh, another really important one is maths. I mean this isn't 
like completely necessary. I think maths does come up. I'll get onto that in a bit. There's another question about maths. I know a lot of people did take maths A level on my course, so you do need math skills to do it. And then lastly, physics. So maths and physics are both really important, but they also are useful depending on what you want to go into. A lot of people who want to take marine biology or marine biology and oceanography or just purely oceanography, physics and maths are really, really important. Um, physics does come up quite a lot in the course, and especially if you want to go down a more oceanography route. Obviously, you might not know that yet, but you can figure that out when you get there. At university, they're quite flexible with that kind of thing. I know at Southampton, they they let you interchange courses all the time. So if even if you applied for just marine biology and you get there and you think, oh, I really love oceanography or like physics is my real strong suit, um, you can switch courses to take marine biology with oceanography or you can just move straight over to oceanography because at the beginning you're all kind of bunched in together and then you get more specific as you go. I got here and realized I really don't like oceanography. Physics is not my strong suit, neither is maths. So I'm really happy with taking just marine biology and avoiding all the oceanography modules. Also, another massive point to make is that you should take subjects that one, you really enjoy because you're likely to do so much better at them if you enjoy learning them and if you find it interesting. You'll be so much more motivated and it will just be a much nicer experience. Also take subjects that you're good at because at the end of the day, why wouldn't you make it easier for yourself? Um, and also like you don't have to take all of those sub like all of those subjects. I took uh, history uh, A level, but I took history just because I simply loved history. I really enjoyed it, and I didn't want to give it up yet. And it hasn't hindered me at all in my marine biology process so far. But I would definitely suggest those five if you're looking to get into marine biology. Another big question that people ask is where can I do marine biology? Um, again, I'm gonna base this on the UK because I don't have that much experience outside of the UK. But um, I know in the UK, there are not actually that many universities that do marine biology. It's around 10 or under 10. Um, so it kind of limits your choices quite significantly compared to if you did a business degree where you can you know, pretty much go wherever you like. In the UK, you have to be either near a coast or by the sea, technically, to do marine biology because you do a lot of field work, a lot of courses, a lot of practicals that require a boat or the sea. I know I applied, you can apply for five universities, so I applied for Southampton, there's one in Exeter, they have a Falmouth campus which do marine biology, um, I applied for Portsmouth, Plymouth and Bangor, Bangor is in Wales, and I also know that Swansea and Newcastle do it. I know when you're applying for university you have your first choice and then you have like a backup option and then you kind of rank them in order of like which ones that you would rather go to or that you feel that you can get into. But I chose Southampton because they have the NOC, which is this amazing facility. They have so many boats, so many submersibles. It's literally like the hub and the hive for marine biology in the UK. And all of their professors were so nice, really, really experienced, really, really up to date and relevant. Um, also, you've got to think about uh, grades about getting in so I know depending on if you want to do a master's or a bachelor's degree there are different entry requirements at Southampton it was AAB to get into the master's and ABB to get into the bachelor's degree some of them were a little bit lower so Portsmouth was BBC to get into their marine biology course so you've got to think about what are your grades going to be what's achievable for you uh, or what's aspirational for you and where do you want to go and also just Base it on if you actually like the university, if you like the look of the course, that's what's really important. Another really big question people ask is, how do I get in? How do I make my personal statement? How do I basically try and sell myself to this university? I think one of the main things that you can do to get into university is just to show interest in your subject and to show interest in your field, okay? So for marine biology, um, make sure that whatever you're writing on your personal statement is relevant to marine biology, so or relevant to the ocean, or relevant to what you're interested in. So don't just write random things that have nothing to do with your course, write things that are really up to date and relevant within the field. And 
it doesn't have to be anything like outrageous. You don't have to be the only person applying that's swam with killer whales or you know rescued a billion turtles off a beach. Like it doesn't have to be that because I know that that isn't a realistic thing for so many people. I never did any of that and I still haven't done any of that and I want to one day but it wasn't a realistic thing when you're 18 and you're applying for university. So there are so many ways that you can make yourself really, really relevant and interested in the subject without having to fly to another country, spend loads and loads of money and do these like amazing but slightly unrealistic things just to get into university. You don't have to do any of that. So many things that are free that you can do from your home. You don't even need to leave your house to do. So one thing that my college introduced me to was Future Learn. They're not sponsoring me. Um, but Future Learn is basically uh, an online learning source. So they post these uh, courses that you can sign up to. They're completely free. You don't have to pay for them. And they basically give you all of these courses um, you can literally just type in the keywords like marine biology or ocean and there'll be a list of courses that will come up and they literally don't take much time, they take about, they all depend basically and they all vary but I know some take like four hours a week to do and they'll go on for like a couple weeks and you can just do them in your free time, work through them, work through the exercises, just read information and um, they're really really important and just take notes. And then you can put that on your personal statement and be like, I've done an online learning course on the deep oceans. And that is so important. That's showing interest. That's showing that you actually care and that you've taken your own free time and used it to do something that's interested and relevant to the course. So basically, I'll put the link below. I've put some on my Instagram about it already, but um, I'll put the link below and you can check that out. Uh, I'm doing one at the moment at uni, Southampton are running one here and it's about the Western Indian Ocean uh, and it's really really interesting so yeah there's always stuff like that online that you can find and do and you can make notes about and it can really make you stand out and show that you actually do care and you're, you're taking your own time to do something towards the course. Another thing that I also wanted to know when I was applying for marine biology and people ask me a lot is how much maths is there in marine biology? I haven't finished my degree yet but so far the maths is manageable. I never did maths A level, I only did maths up to a GCSE level and any maths I did beyond that was in biology, chemistry and geography. Um, so I haven't done like really really high level maths. A lot of the maths you also do is in statistical tests. Going into labs and you're recording all your data, you often have to put them into graphs, stats tests, and like draw out your hypothesis and get a conclusion. And you do a lot of that in like geography before. So I think you'll be okay if you haven't taken maths A level, I've been fine with it. And obviously if you do take a more oceanography route and a more physics route, there is a lot more maths and there is a lot more equations and things that I don't even understand, um, which is why I didn't really enjoy them as much. Um, I just, physics isn't my thing. That's not a problem, I can put my hands up and say it. But uh, so far I found it okay. So it's not, it's not the end of the world if you haven't taken maths or you find maths really, really hard. Um, it's not a maths degree, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So some people ask about jobs and the possibility of jobs and what are the job prospects for marine biology. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't know everything. I'm still, I've just gone into my second year, so I'm still working things out. I don't really know exactly what I wanna go into or exactly the field I wanna be. I don't have a specific job at the end of this that I'm like, ah, oh, you know, that's exactly what I wanna do. I hopefully, I'm gonna find that out while I'm here. Do that the university prepares you the best that they can to make you almost like an expert in lots of different fields so that you're not really really defined and narrow and that you can actually apply yourself on a broader spectrum for like different kinds of jobs. Ah, no, I don't want to put anyone off marine biology when I'm saying this. I know I would have been like oh my goodness I don't want to do that but there is a <laughs> there is a coding module <clears throat> and coding is actually quite an important part in in science nowadays. I mean I didn't know I was gonna have to code when I came here. I don't like coding, I don't like computers, I don't like technology, so um, 
I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a good start. I really can't code. I had no coding experience before. I mean, nothing. I'm terrible. I literally think I have to charge my desktop. I'm stupid. I don't understand <laughs> technology. Um, but they do teach you how to code and actually it's such an important skill and it's made me realize that I need to get better at it because it's really useful, especially nowadays when everything is becoming more online and it's it's evolving, you know? Science isn't just write your notes in a notepad and draw a graph, it's code a statistical test and give me a graph and an output and give me all of these numbers and figures and you need to be able to use technology and you need to be able to code to do that. So the university does give you skills that make you really, really employable for things that in involve technology. We also do GIS mapping and a lot of things like that, which would be really, really useful skills. At the end of the day, whatever field you want to go into, within marine biology, the university does give you a really good array of skills that will make you really employable afterwards. So we had people come in and talk to us about, they volunteered to go to the Arctic and they did six months of volunteering on a big vessel in the freezing cold, but they got to look at zooplankton and plankton under a microscope. And it was an amazing experience. And actually doing volunteering and research jobs are really, really useful because they show that you've got experience in your field, you know the practical side of things, and that can get you a better job in the future. I mean, it is more difficult because you're not raking in money, but it is an important thing that you do actually have to do, and a lot of people do go into research after university. Um, and there are a lot of different jobs that you can go into. I did a bit of research recently, and there are a lot of jobs on fisheries management and consultancy and conservation and really, really interesting jobs like that. I think one of the things that people think when they think about marine biology is like swimming with dolphins every day and like diving with turtles and like on a reef. And obviously that is an aspect of the job, but a lot of people don't do that as a marine biologist. You're in a lab or you're on a ship or you're just on land like it's not all in the sea it's not all diving and it's not all in the Maldives I know that I used to be like oh that's what I want to do when I'm older and then um you realize that it doesn't actually always involve that which can be really good for some people some people don't like getting in the ocean and they just like learning about it so it's definitely it can be whatever you kind of make it if if you know what I mean Okay, so hopefully I have cleared up some of those questions and that you found them useful. I might do another one of these in the future if you have some more questions. And again, I'm not a marine biologist yet, so I don't know everything, but I will try to answer any questions that you have with the best of my ability. Feel free to drop me a DM on Instagram if there's anything else that you want answering or if you want another video. Thank you so much for getting this far. If you have, again, I'm sorry for the terrible video of the editing, audio, everything. I'm sorry. But thank you so much if you did get this far. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.